Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna compare the Eero Pro 6e to the Eero 6 Plus. We're gonna talk about their specs, we're gonna talk about their speed test and range test, and I'm gonna give you guys my overall opinion at the end, which one is worth getting and why. Now, as far as the testing environments, I used my iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device, as well as the combination of my Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and Pixel 6 Pro, which are Wi-Fi 6e devices for both the speed test and range test, and I tested them in the same place, so it's an apples to apples comparison. Now, before we begin, take a quick second to smash that subscribe button down below. It's that shiny red button, you know you wanna click it. It's free to do. All right, and hit the like button and hit the bell for notifications so you guys know every time I post a video. Starting with the physical dimensions, the Pro 6C is wider and lower. So this one, the 6 Plus is a bit taller, but much smaller footprint. And they both have that same design style. So they both have two auto sensing ports. However, the Pro 6E has a 2.5 gigabit port and a gigabit port where the 6 Plus only has gigabit ports. So the Pro 6E in theory can go faster. And a USB-C, they are both powered by that. However, their power adapters are slightly different in size and power. So the Pro 6E uses a 27 watt USB-C power cord and they are both 100 to 240 volts, whereas the 6 Plus uses 15 watts. So it is a smaller power adapter on the 6 Plus, but I mean, they're both small either way. Now each node in the Pro 6E covers up to 2,000 square feet. So if you get a two pack, in theory it could cover up to 4,000 square feet. Now I have done a range test and we'll go over those numbers momentarily. The 6 Plus covers up to 1,500 square feet per node. So if you get a two pack, that makes it 3,000 square feet of coverage. Now one of the major differences between these two is that the Pro 6E is a tri-band unit where the 6 Plus is a dual band unit. So what does that mean and what's that used for? So a tri-band means three bands, a 2.4 gigahertz, a five gigahertz, and in this case, a six gigahertz band. Whereas the dual band is a 2.4 gigahertz and a five gigahertz band. So it's missing that third band. Well, it's not really missing it, it just doesn't have it. So what's the advantage of this extra six gigahertz band that the Pro 6E has that the six plus does not? Well, the 6 GHz band is the new frequency that's a lot less congested and it can go a lot faster. However, only Wi-Fi 6E devices can see it, hence the name Pro 6E because it's compatible with Wi-Fi 6E devices. So talking about speeds, this Pro 6E has a speed rating of AXZ5400, where the dual band has a speed rating of AX3000. They both have the Zigbee and Thread, so they both have the smart home hubs built in. So some smart home devices require a hub. Now I typically when I buy smart home devices I try to buy some that don't require a hub that way I can use whichever router I want or whichever mesh system I want and I'm not really tied down to a hub but some do require it and these do have a built-in so that's kind of a nice added convenience. And one thing to note about Eero in general if you're interested in parental controls it does support it, however, it does require a subscription which is called Eero Secure. It's not expensive, however, it does require a subscription, so that might be uh, a deal breaker for some. So just as a heads up, they also have Eero Secure Plus which costs a little bit more and that includes VPN and some other additional features. Okay. So jumping into the numbers, starting with the internet speed test. Now, no matter how fast this mesh system is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speed. So in my case, my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. And notice I said megabits per second, not megabytes per second. I always say that in every video, um, but I have to be specific. So one byte is equal to eight bits. So just as a heads up, there's a huge difference between those two numbers. So all the numbers are gonna be in megabits per second. Okay, so when I hook up my computer via ethernet to one of these, any one of these things, I get full speeds, no problem. In fact, I get even a little bit faster than what my ISP advertises. However, Wi-Fi devices are a different story and I typically test with my phones. Now looking at the numbers with the Wi-Fi 6 device and with the Wi-Fi 6E device, 
The Eero 6 Plus, I mean, they're very similar to each other, but the fact is that the Eero 6 Plus did slightly better than the Pro 6E, which was surprising to me because the Pro 6E actually supports Wi-Fi 6E, where the 6 Eero 6 Plus does not. However, even with a Wi-Fi 6E device connected to Wi-Fi 6, so I'm not using the 6 gigahertz band, I am using the 5 gigahertz band, it still did a little bit faster than the same phone hooked up to this on the 6 gigahertz band. So the 6 Plus is off to a very good start. Now, that was an internet speed test. To truly isolate the router by itself, I do a local area speed test where I make my computer into a local speed test server and I go from phone to router to computer. Now, just as a heads up, when I do these tests, I am testing just the Eero 6 Plus as a mesh system, and then separately, I'm testing the Eero Pro 6E as a mesh system. Granted, since these are both Eero's, you can technically connect them to each other and they will create a, the same mesh network. Looking at the speed test, there is a drastic increase in speeds for both devices, especially for the Pro 6E on that six gigahertz band, and this is where it's starting to shine because it's a lot less congested and it can handle much faster speeds. Now jumping into the wired backhaul configuration, this is when you have two nodes, two or more nodes, and they are connected to each other via an ethernet cable. There can be a switch in between them, but essentially that's called wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul. And looking at the results, we get very similar performance to the single router configuration. However, for the Pro 6E, there is a caveat here. Now you'll notice that for the Pro 6E, if you look at the Wi-Fi 6E speeds, it did slow down a lot more than when it was in the single router configuration. The reason for that is the Pro 6E only has one 2.5 gigabit port. So if you're using that for your modem, then you only have your gigabit port to go to the secondary one, so it will suffer some speeds and and that's why it's capped at the gigabit speeds however if your internet speeds are up to gigabit which is the case for me you can actually hook up your internet to this guy to the gigabit port and actually use the 2.5 gigabit to go to the other one to create a lan a local area network that can go faster even on the secondary one because now you're going from 2.5 to 2.5 now this is not going to speed up your internet but it will speed up your local area network so if you're doing LAN gaming or if you're doing file transfers, in theory it can go faster assuming your other hardware can support it. And when I did do this, I got very similar speeds to the single router configuration with the Pro 6E. Now, going into wireless backhaul, wireless backhaul is exactly the same thing as wired backhaul except you remove the Ethernet cable, which is the more convenient solution because you get your main router, you hook it up to your modem, and then the secondary one, you go one or two rooms away. In my case, I'm about 40 feet away or so. And you plug it into the power and it automatically connects to the main one wirelessly. Now, typically, dual band systems are not as fast. They, they don't perform as well as tri-band systems, typically speaking, because they don't have that additional band. Sometimes tri-bands have a dedicated band they, they use. Sometimes tri-bands use a combination of all three bands to do the wireless backhaul. This was the weird thing because the Pro 6E did worse than what I was expecting and the Eero 6 Plus did better than what I was expecting. Honestly, for a dual band system, the 6 Plus did a phenomenal job and for a tri-band system, the Pro 6E did an okay job it wasn't that great now jumping into range test now range will vary based on location you know if you're in between floors if you have a lot of thick walls if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around a lot of other wireless interference this can all hurt your range now in my case again they're testing the same place so it's an apples to apples comparison and we do the range test at 20 feet away obviously the pro 6e is going to do better with the wi-fi 6e devices because it does support it. However, at 50 feet away, the Pro 6E loses that six gigahertz band edge that it had because the way the six gigahertz, the Wi-Fi 6E band works is it's very fast, but it is very short range. So at 50 feet away, 
even my Wi-Fi 6C devices no longer see that 6 gigahertz band. They're now talking to the Pro 6C on the 5 gigahertz band. So therefore, it does slow down quite a bit. Now the interesting thing is that if we look at these speeds, the Pro 6C went further. So it has more range. However, the 6 Plus, once you start getting a little more farther away, it actually performs much better, typically speaking, it's giving you better speeds and then it just kind of cuts off. Now, jumping into the Eero app, this is what you use to set up and configure both of these mesh systems. So the Eero app is a very simple to use app. It's super, super simple. It's available both on iOS and on Android. So when you get this mesh system, you download the app and then you follow the instructions. It tells you what to connect where, it tells you then, okay, go and add this node and you're up and running and it just asks you to pick your Wi-Fi name, your SSID, and your password. Here is a hint. If you're replacing your existing router and you want all your devices to automatically connect to this guy, you can just use the same Wi-Fi name and password, assuming your previous one was also one SSID. So, one thing to note about that is when you are using your SSID and your password, they are both case sensitive. So even your Wi-Fi name, your SSID, is also case sensitive. I had to find this out the hard way. Uh, that's why I know that. Long story short, it's very easy to set up. However, because it's so simple to use, it hides a lot of features and it doesn't give you a whole lot of customization. So if you're someone that really likes to tinker a lot with the settings, then I recommend, I don't know, probably going the ASUS route. ASUS typically has the most number of options. Now, which one is worth getting and why? Well, in my opinion, the 6 Plus did a much better job considering the price of this thing. So price per performance, the 6 Plus is way better deal than the Pro 6E. Now, the Pro 6E did outshine it in certain places, like with the Wi-Fi 6E, it does have that additional 2.5 gigabit port so you can actually create a faster local area network but if those things aren't too important to you and you don't want super far range granted the range on this thing was also pretty good as well i'd say in my opinion the overall winner is the euro 6 plus if you guys enjoyed this video smash that subscribe button hit the like button hit the bell for notifications i have way more mesh wi-fi videos coming up as always thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one